In this video, I'm going to show you briefly how to work with data in JAS. To read in data, we're going to go to Open, and I can choose a recent file. I can find something on my computer, and the type. And in this particular case, let's suppose that I'm I'm browsing on my computer in a folder I already have, or or in another folder. When I go there, what you're going to see is it looks for these types of data sets. So if you can see about where my cursor is right now, those are the particular types of data sets that it will allow you to, um, to read into JASP. And it reads any of those particular types in quite easily. So there's a, a JASP type of data set. Um, CSV I often use for, for reading things into JASP. It works really well. .sav is SPSS. .dta is data, and then you can see there's the, the SAS options there as well, and some others. So there's a variety of options. So let's say I want to read in this, this CSV um, data set, and, and no matter what kind you bring in, it brings it in um, quite easily. You'll see it lined up like this, and you'll see across the top it's got all my variables. Okay, all the way across the top, I can scroll back and forth to see all of my variables here. Okay, and um, for each of those, it has decided based on some defaults and preferences you can put into the program what kind of variable it is. This, this, these three lines here it means it thinks it's ordinal data. Okay, which this technically is. This is this is Likert type data. These these items. This is a um, a, a fictional scale with twenty items. Okay. Over here, it thinks that this one is scale, which means interval ratio. It uses the same terminology as SPSS does that way, and, and so forth. It thinks my gender is scale, which it isn't. I mean, ordinal, which it isn't, so I'm going to change it to nominal. Age is scale, that's correct, and race here also is should be changed to nominal. So you can see these three circles, kind of like a Venn diagram almost, so they don't overlap, is, is what we use for nominal data. The reason this is going to matter, there are some procedures you try to do that if you have the wrong data type listed here, it's not going to do it for you. So there are cases when, you know, you will, you'll need to check on that. It, it may be even the case, um, sometimes I find that for particular analyses, my Likert type data, which I have here is ordinal, which it is, technically needs to be changed to scale for some purposes, some things that I need to do in here. So just be aware of that, although it's quite quick and easy to use. The other thing to be aware of um, here in the data editor is it's going to tell you if you have for any variable, let's say I'm, I click on this one, um, it, it's going to tell you um, when you click on it, there we go, the value label. So you can give each of the, the values a label. For example, maybe this is a strongly disagree to strongly agree scale. So, so that can be um, edited and changed in here. Just by clicking on that, I can edit and so forth. Okay, strongly, and then just gotta get on there. And I often say neither agree nor disagree, but for the sake of brevity here, I'm just going to put net, neither. And then um, this one's agree. And the last one's going to be strongly agree. And it will only let you do this for categorical data. It won't let you do it for scale type data. So you can see it's now changed all of this within here. It still has, of course, the numbers recorded and so forth, but it has that link. What it won't let you do is, a, is apply an additional label to the variable name. So that is one of the limitations that I find bothersome in JASP, is that I have a variable name, but I can't put any kind of description of that variable. Like you will find in most softwares, you can, you know, like SPSS or Stata, or you can write out you know, maybe the whole wording of that particular item or question um, in the data set so that, so that you know what the values mean. So you have to keep, I mean, so that you know what this scale one means. What was the wording of this? So you'd have to keep 
um, either keep a separate kind of code book that tells you that, or you're going to have to um, give your variables names that are meaningful enough that it can trigger that in you. And of course, it's hard to do with a scale with, with when you've got items that are full sentences, you know, with gender, age, race, those, so forth, it's a little bit easier to do that. So that's the, the basics of reading it in. Now, something to be aware of is when I am here using Stata, it is act, it pulls it in from um, the CSV I'm using. If I go change the AS, the CSV, okay, a value in my CSV, it's going to get changed in here. You can get around that by change, by saving this as a JAS file. If you save it as a JAS file, it will know, for example, I made these changes here, I, I added this coding in here, the value labels, it will know I did that, and if I open a J the JAS file I saved, it will still refer back to that CSV as far as I understand. Um, I'm not a computer scientist, but as far as I understand, it still re refers to the CSV for the data, but any changes that you've told it to make here, um, within the program here, for example, you can't, you can't um, change the name of the variable here. You have to do that in the CSV. However, if I've done something like this, or maybe I've added a new variable in by making a sum of the other items, something like that, that is something where you'd want to actually save your JAS file. If you save your JAS file, open the JAS file, then again, it will pull the CSV data as far as I understand. And it will also bring into it the additions such as created new variables that you have done here while you were working in in JAS. Uh, however, that's the topic of another video.